Hi guys, this is my 16 pole Scalar North rotor that I'm playing with. It's hooked up to a, a trifiler coil, just a single transistor, single MJL transistor, with some fixed resistors on there and the bowl. Uh, that's the cat pulsar circuit. If you look at the lead, you can see that it's pulsing at about. Um, about 0.7 Hz, about once every one and a half seconds or, or thereabouts, for about 1.6% uh, duty cycle. So it's only a very, very quick, quick pulse. And that dumps this cap bank, which is 7 times 6800 microfarad 50 volt caps, all in parallel. Okay, this is the charging battery bank, 24 volt bank. So the negative is coming off the, um, you just see it over the back there, that M MJL15024 transistor, which is dumping the negative of, of the cat bank into the, uh, into the battery bank. Positive comes straight from the, from the bridge. Okay, that's the primary battery. See the, the black is negative. That red clip there is my 12 volt supply for the cat pulsar timing and the orange one there runs the SSG circuit. So it's it's currently tuned for two pulses. If you look at the top of those pulses you can see the cat voltage there driving up and then bouncing down when it dumps. You see there those uh, my magnets are very poorly spaced and, and, and not set out real well so those little humps in the H wave don't don't look as good as they probably should. So it's basically this circuit here, which is a circuit that Rick posted uh, way back in July 06. It's exactly the same circuit apart from the rotor, which is a scalar north. Okay. So you can see it's it's charging up this bank here. This meter's connected over that bank. And you can see uh, every now and then the voltage will uh, spike up over the bank. It, it charges pretty well. That's, this bank started off at about 25 and a half volts about 10 minutes ago when I started it up. Uh, the flywheel does have a lot of torque in it, which uh, I'm just going to disconnect it. And disconnect the cat pulsar off it. And we'll give you a look at this rotor. It's got a fair amount of flywheel in it, so it does take a while to to slow down and start up. So putting a fair bit of pressure with my hand on there to try and slow it down. But, okay, so here's, here's a look at my rotor. You can see the, the north stacked together. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the spacing is not perfect between the magnets. Uh, the spacing between some of the magnets, this point here, is anywhere between 38 and 40 millimeters, and the magnets uh, are 10 millimeters wide, so there's, there's 20 millimeters. So 20 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 20 millimeters. Uh, in a perfect world, that would be spot on, but this is not a perfect rotor. Okay, so just to give you an idea. So you can see 16 poles all around the rotor. What I did want to show, particularly for Mario, is if I put this little compass here, kind of where you can see it. If we turn the rotor around a little bit, you can see that's the north. Get this a little bit closer. North. Got the scale of south in the middle there. And swings around north again. Okay, I'll be able to show this better if I just prop that up a little bit. I 
spin that round. So the north lines up with the north. Use a scale of south. East I'm taking as the zero in between the north and the south. Same for west. Okay, and if I turn this a little bit quicker, you can see the compass spins around as I go. Okay. One last thing I wanted to show is um, I wanted to show you the waveform of these magnets on the scope. So I'm just going to scope the trigger wire here. Keep an eye on the scope. Uh, AC. Two volts for division. see it there okay because the magnets are so close together give that another spin because the magnets are so close together and you can see they are very poorly spaced okay around five milliseconds per division on the time scale and one volt for division down on the volts. You can see because these magnets aren't set out properly um, the amplitude of the wave does vary a lot and does the frequency a little bit well, it's a bit hard to see on the scope. But you can, uh, If you slow that down frame by frame you'll get an idea of how close these magnets are but you can see the leading edge of these of this wave um, the leading edge there is quite sharp and the trailing edge sort of drops down a little bit. And you can see these are very close but given that it does give me 